A common problem is the following. Given a set of constraints, find the extreme value of an objective function. For example, the maximum number of gadgets given the time required for each stage of production, the least area given length and width requirements, the greatest volume given size and shape limitations. If the constraints are linear equations, the optimization problem is said to be a problem in linear programming. The programming refers to the idea of a program, a list of events. Let's go into a little more detail. A constraint is a quantity that is the bound for an inequality. For example, the number of occupants must be less than 450, the revenue for selling tables and chairs must be greater than 8,000, the number of shoes must be between 30 and 70. The values of the quantity that satisfy all the constraints form the feasible region. For example, a furniture manufacturer makes three- and four-legged tables. It costs $50 to make a three-legged table and $80 to make a four-legged table. If they have 4,000 table legs available and $72,000 available for construction costs, find the constraints. So suppose we let x be the number of three-legged tables and y be the number of four-legged tables. Since a three-legged table requires three legs and a four-legged table requires four legs, then the total number of legs used is... And since they have 4,000 total legs available, the number of legs used must be less than or equal to 4,000. And so this gives us our first constraint. 3x plus 4y is less than or equal to 4,000. Since it costs $50 to make a three-legged table and 80 to make a four-legged table, then the total production cost will be... And since 72,000 is available for construction costs, then 50x plus 80y must be less than or equal to 72,000. There are actually two other constraints. Since we're talking about real objects, the number of three- and four-legged tables must be non-negative. So x must be greater than or equal to zero, and y must be greater than or equal to zero. And so we have four total constraints. Now, we could graph the feasible region, but real problems have thousands of variables, so graphing is only useful for gaining insight and intuition. So we won't go into any details. But a useful strategy, ignore inequalities, at least at first. We'll rewrite the inequalities as equalities, this will give us a set of lines we can graph. The lines will form the boundary of the feasible region. So going back to our problem, we'll turn the inequalities into equalities and graph the lines. Then select the region that satisfies all four inequalities. And again, because we're not really going to use the graph except to give us some insight, we won't go into any details of how we select the region it's going to be some part of the plane. The feasible region has an important property. Suppose you take two points in the feasible region. The line between the two points is also in the feasible region. If this is true for any two points in the feasible region, we say that the feasible region is a convex set. And in general, a region is convex if the line between any two points is entirely within the region. The feasible region corresponds to all possible, that is to say feasible, values for the variable quantities. Our goal is to maximize or minimize an objective function. For example, we might want to minimize the total cost of production or maximize the total profit. So we need to define an objective function. The important thing here is that the objective function is not a constraint. So again, going back to our furniture example, suppose a three-legged table yields a profit of $20, while a four-legged table yields a profit of $35. Let's find the objective function. So using x as the number of three-legged tables and y as the number of four-legged tables, we have, where we traditionally use L since it's the first letter in the phrase, objective function. Suppose our feasible region is convex then we have a very useful result. The fundamental theorem of linear programming 
the extreme value of a continuous objective function over a convex region occurs at a vertex of the feasible region. Here's an informal proof. Suppose that at some point the objective function has value m. Then the equation where the objective function equals m is going to be a line or curve in the plane, and any point along that line or curve gives the same value m. Now, suppose we are at some point in the feasible region. Changing m to a slightly higher or lower value m prime will shift the curve slightly and will still be in the feasible region. So m can't be a maximum or a minimum. But if the curve passes through a vertex, then either a higher value m prime puts us outside the feasible region, so m is a maximum, or a lower value m prime puts us outside the feasible region, so m is a minimum. So the extreme values must occur at the vertices of the feasible region. So again, going back to our example, if we want to maximize profit, we want to find the vertices of the feasible region. So with some effort, we find the vertices. And we can evaluate our objective function at each of the vertices. At x equals 800, y equals 400, our profit will be. At x equals 4,000 thirds, y equals 0, our profit will be. At x equals 0, y equals 900, our profit will be. And at x equals 0, y equals 0, our profit will be. which gives us a maximum profit at 0, 900. And note that this means we're going to use 3,600 table legs, so we'll have some left over, but it will cost us $72,000, which is the amount we have available to spend. And so everything you need to know about solving linear optimization problems is the following. To solve a linear optimization problem, find the constraint equations, Find the objective function, locate the feasible region, solve for the vertices of the feasible region, calculate the objective function at each vertex, and then select the vertex that gives the required extreme value. You can remember this using the handy acronym FLISCUS. Well, maybe not. Now, the hard part is finding the constraint of the objective functions, but the tedious part is solving for the vertices. So how can we do that efficiently? We'll take a look at that next.